Samadhi Sanskrit, Samadhi Hindi pronunciation, S -ma -di, also called Samapati, in Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, Sikhism and Yajic schools refers to a state of meditative consciousness. In the Yajic traditions, and the Buddhist commentarial tradition on which the Burmese Vipassana movement and the Thai forest tradition rely, it is a meditative absorption or trance, attained by the practice of dhyana. In the oldest Buddhist suttas, on which several contemporary Western Theravada teachers rely, it refers to the development of a luminous mind which is equanimous and mindful. In Buddhism, it is the last of the eight elements of the Noble Eightfold Path. In the Ashtanga Yoga tradition, it is the eighth and final limb identified in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Topic definition Sarbakar, Samadhi is meditative absorption, attained by the practice of dhyana. Diener, Erhard and Fischer Schreiber, Samadhi is a non-dualistic state of consciousness in which the consciousness of the experiencing subject becomes one with the experienced object. Shankman, an abiding in which mind becomes very still but does not merge with the object of attention, and is thus able to observe and gain insight into the changing flow of experience. Paramahansa Yogananda, a soundless state of breathlessness. A blissful super-consciousness state in which a yogi perceives the identity of the individualized soul and cosmic spirit. Etymology Sanskrit <etymology> 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 Various interpretations for the term's etymology are possible. Sam, together, a, toward, stem of didhati, puts, places, a putting or joining together. Sam, together, or, integrated, a, towards, da, to get, to hold, to acquire integration or wholeness, or truth. Samapati, Sam, uniformly, or fully adi to get established a state wherein one establishes himself to the fullest extent in the supreme consciousness sama even dhi intellect a state of total equilibrium of a detached intellect sam perfect complete dhi consciousness a state of being where all distinctions between the person who is the subjective meditator, the act of meditation and the object of meditation merge into oneness. Sama, equanimous, dhi, buddy or the intellect. Topic: <laughs> Chinese. Common Chinese terms for samadhi include the transliterations sanmei, sanmei and sanmodi, sanmoda or sanmoti, as well as the translation of the term literally as ding, ding fixity. Kumarahiva's translations typically use sanmei, sanmei while the translations of Xuanzang tend to use ding, ding fixity. The Chinese Buddhist canon includes these as well as other translations and transliterations of the term. Origins According to Rhys Davids the first attested usage of the term samadhi in Sanskrit literature was in the Maitri Upanishad. The origins of the practice of dhyana, which culminates into samadhi, are a matter of dispute. According to Bronckhorst, dhyana was a Buddhist invention, whereas Alexander Wynne argues that dhyana was incorporated from Brahmanical practices, in the Nikayas ascribed to Alara Kalama and Yudhika Ramaputta. These practices were paired to mindfulness and insight, and given a new interpretation. Kalupahana also argues that the Buddha reverted to the meditational practices he had learned from Alara Kalama and Yudhika Ramaputta. Buddhism Samadhi The term samadhi derives from the root sama dha, which means to collect or bring together, and thus it is often translated as concentration or unification of mind. In the early Buddhist texts, samadhi is also associated with the term samatha calm abiding. In the commentarial tradition, samadhi is defined as ekagata, one-pointedness of mind Buddhaghosa defines samadhi as 
the centering of consciousness and consciousness concomitants evenly and rightly on a single object the state in virtue of which consciousness and its concomitants remain evenly and rightly on a single object, undistracted and unscattered." According to Buddhaghosa, the Theravada Pali texts mention four kinds of samadhi Momentary concentration a mental stabilization which arises during vipassana. Preliminary concentration arises out of the meditator's initial attempts to focus on a meditation object. Access concentration arises when the five hindrances are dispelled, when jhana is present, and with the appearance the counterpart sign Absorption concentration the total immersion of the mind on its meditation of object and stabilization of all four jhanas. Samadhi and dhyana Samadhi is the last of the eight elements of the Noble Eightfold Path. It is often interpreted as referring to dhyana, but in the suttas samadhi and dhyana are not the same. While samadhi is one-pointed concentration, in dhyana this samadhi is used in the initial stages, to give way to a state of equanimity and mindfulness. The practice of dhyana makes it possible to keep access to the senses in a mindful way, avoiding primary responses to the sense impressions. Qualities of the Rupa Jhanas The Suttapitaka and the Agamas describe four stages of Rupa Jhana. Rupa refers to the material realm, in a neutral stance, as different form the Kama realm lust, desire, and the Arupa realm, non -material realm Each jhana is characterized by a set of qualities which are present in that jhana. First dhyana, the first dhyana can be entered when one is secluded from sensuality and unskillful qualities. There is pity, rapture, and non-sensual sukha, pleasure, as the result of seclusion, while vitarka vikara, discursive thought, continues. Second dhyana, there is pity, rapture, and non-sensual sukha, pleasure, as the result of concentration, samadhi g, born of samadhi. Ekagata unification of awareness free from vitarka vikara discursive thought inner tranquility third dhyana upekka equanimous effective detachment mindful and alert and senses pleasure with the body fourth dhyana upekasati parasuti purity of equanimity and mindfulness neither pleasure nor pain traditionally the fourth jhana is seen as the beginning of attaining psychic powers abhijña. Topic. Interpretation of the Four Dhyanas According to Richard Gombrich, the sequence of the Four Rupa Jhanas describes two different cognitive states I know this is controversial, but it seems to me that the third and fourth jhanas are thus quite unlike the second. Alexander Wynne further explains that the dhyana scheme is poorly understood. According to Wynne, words expressing the inculcation of awareness, such as sati, sampahano, and upekka, are mistranslated or understood as particular factors of meditative states, whereas they refer to a particular way of perceiving the sense objects. Thus the expression sato sampahano in the third jhana must denote a state of awareness different from the meditative absorption of the second jhana it suggests that the subject is doing something different from remaining in a meditative state, i.e. that he has come out of his absorption and is now once again aware of objects. The same is true of the word upek k ha, it does not denote an abstract equanimity, but it means to be aware of something and indifferent to it. The third and fourth jhana s, as it seems to me, describe the process of directing states of meditative absorption towards the mindful awareness of objects. The Noble Eightfold Path is a condensation of more elaborate descriptions of this path, which starts with a householder who hears the Dhamma and leaves home either literally or figuratively, and after preparatory practices starts with the practice of dhyana. The Pali Canon describes eight progressive states of jhana, four meditations of form rupa jhana, and four formless meditations arupajanas, though the early texts do not use the term dhyana for the four formless meditations, calling them instead ayatana dimension, sphere, base. A ninth form is Naroda Samapati. According to Bronckhorst, the four Rupa Jhana may be an original contribution of the Buddha to the religious landscape of India. 
They formed an alternative to the painful ascetic practices of the Jains. The Arupa Jhana were incorporated from non-Buddhist ascetic traditions. According to Krangel, the development of meditative practices in ancient India was a complex interplay between Vedic and non-Vedic traditions. Dhyana and insight A core problem in the study of early Buddhism is the relation between dhyana and insight. The Buddhist tradition has incorporated two traditions regarding the use of jhana. There is a tradition that stresses attaining insight bodhi, prajna, kensho, as the means to awakening and liberation. But it has also incorporated the yogic tradition, as reflected in the use of jhana, which is rejected in other sutras as not resulting in the final result of liberation. The problem was famously voiced in 1936 by Louis de la Vallée Poussin, in his text Musala et Narada, Le Chemin de Nirvana. Schmidhausen discerns three possible roads to liberation as described in the suttas, to which Vedder adds the sole practice of dhyana itself, which he sees as the original, liberating practice. The four rupa jhanas themselves constituted the core liberating practice of early Buddhism, c. q. the Buddha. Mastering the four rupa jhanas, whereafter liberating insight is attained mastering the four rupa jhanas and the four arupa jhanas whereafter liberating insight is attained liberating insight itself suffices this problem has been elaborated by several well-known scholars including Tilman Vetter Johannes Bronckhorst and Richard Gombrich Schmidhausen notes that the mention of the four noble truths is constituting liberating insight which is attained after mastering the rupa jhanas, is a later addition to texts such as Majjhima Nikaya 36. Both Schmidhausen and Bronckhorst note that the attainment of insight, which is a cognitive activity, cannot be possible in state wherein all cognitive activity has ceased. According to Vetter and Bronckhorst, dhyana itself constituted the original, liberating practice. According to Alexander Wynne, the ultimate aim of dhyana was the attainment of insight, and the application of the meditative state to the practice of mindfulness. According to Frau Wallner, mindfulness was a means to prevent the arising of craving, which resulted simply from contact between the senses and their objects. According to Frau Wallner, this may have been the Buddha's original idea. According to Wynne, this stress on mindfulness may have led to the intellectualism which favored insight over the practice of dhyana. The Arupas Grouped into the jhana scheme are four meditative states, referred to in the early texts as arupas. These are also referred to in commentarial literature as immaterial, formless jhanas arupajanas, also translated as the formless dimensions, in distinction from the first four jhanas, rupa jhanas. In the Buddhist canonical texts, the word jhana is never explicitly used to denote them, they are instead referred to as ayatana. However, they are sometimes mentioned in sequence after the first four jhanas other texts. E.g. MN 121 treat them as a distinct set of attainments and thus came to be treated by later exegetes as jhanas. The immaterial are related to, or derived from, yogic meditation, and a more specific at concentration, while the jhanas proper are related to the cultivation of the mind. The state of complete dwelling in emptiness is reached when the eighth jhana is transcended. The four arupas are Fifth jhana, infinite space Pali Akasanankayatana, skt. Akasanankayatana Sixth jhana, infinite consciousness Pali Vijnanankayatana, skt. Vijnanankayatana Seventh jhana, infinite nothingness Pali Akimkanyayatana, skt. Akimkanyayatana Eighth jhana, neither perception nor non-perception Pali Navasanyanasanyayatana, skt, Nivasamyanasamyayatana, although the dimension of nothingness and the dimension of neither perception nor non-perception are included in the list of nine jhanas taught by the Buddha, they are not included in the Noble Eightfold Path. Noble Path number eight is Sama Samadhi, right concentration, and only the first four jhanas are considered right concentration. If he takes a disciple through all the jhanas, the emphasis is on the cessation of feelings and perceptions, rather than stopping short at the dimension of neither perception nor non-perception. In Buddhist tradition <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Theravada. According to Buddhaghosa, in his influential standard work Visuddhimagga, samadhi is the proximate cause to the obtainment of wisdom. The Visuddhimagga describes 40 different objects for meditation, which are mentioned throughout the Pali Canon, but explicitly enumerated in the Visuddhimagga, such as mindfulness of breathing and loving kindness. Metta. Several Western teachers Thanissaro Bhikkhu, Lee Brasington, Richard Shankman make a distinction between Sutta oriented jhana and Visuddhimagga oriented jhana. Thanissaro Bhikkhu has repeatedly argued that the Pali Canon and the Visuddhimagga give different descriptions of the jhanas, regarding the Visuddhimagga description to be incorrect. Karen Arbel has conducted extensive research on the jhanas and the contemporary criticisms of the commentarial interpretation. Based on this research, and her own experience as a senior meditation teacher, she gives a reconstructed account of the original meaning of the dhyanas. She argues that jhana is an integrated practice, describing the fourth jhana as lucid awareness, not as a state of deep concentration. Mahayana Indian Mahayana the earliest extant Indian Mahayana texts emphasize ascetic practices and forest dwelling, and absorption in states of meditative oneness. These practices seem to have occupied a central place in early Mahayana, also because they may have given access to fresh revelations and inspiration. In the Indian Mahayana traditions the term is also to refer to forms of samadhi, other than dhyana. Section 21 of the Mahavyopati records even 118 samadhi. The Samadhiraja Sutra for example has as its main theme a samadhi called the samadhi that is manifested as the sameness of the essential nature of all dharmas sarva dharma svabhava samadha vipansita samadhi. <laughs> Zen Indian dhyana was translated as chan in Chinese, and Zen in Japanese. Ideologically the Zen tradition emphasizes prajna and sudden insight, but in the actual practice prajna and samadhi, or sudden insight and gradual cultivation, are paired to each other. Especially some lineages in the Rinzai school of Zen stress sudden insight, while the Soto school of Zen lays more emphasis on shikantaza, training awareness of the stream of thoughts, allowing them to arise and pass away without interference. Hinduism Topic <inaudible> Patanjali's Yoga Sutras Samadhi is the main subject of the eighth limb of the Yoga Sutras called Samadhi Pada They resemble the Buddhist jhanas According to David Gordon White the language of the Yoga Sutras is often closer to Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit, the Sanskrit of the early Mahayana Buddhist scriptures, than to the classical Sanskrit of other Hindu scriptures." According to Carol Werner, Patanjali's system is unthinkable without Buddhism. As far as its terminology goes there is much in the Yoga Sutras that reminds us of Buddhist formulations from the Pali Canon and even more so from the Sarvastivada Abhidharma and from Satrantika. Robert Thurman writes that Patanjali was influenced by the success of the Buddhist monastic system to formulate his own matrix for the version of thought he considered orthodox. However, it is also to be noted that the Yoga Sutra, especially the fourth segment of Kaivalya Pada, contains several polemical verses critical of Buddhism, particularly the Vijnanavada school of Vasubandhu. Topic: <laughs> Samadhi Samadhi is oneness with the object of meditation. There is no distinction between act of meditation and the object of meditation. Samadhi is of two kinds, with and without support of an object of meditation. Samprajnata Samadhi, also called Savakalpa Samadhi and Sabiya Samadhi, meditation with support of an object. Samprajata Samadhi is associated with deliberation, reflection, bliss, and I am Ness. The first two, deliberation and reflection, form the basis of the various types of Samapati, Savatarka. Deliberative. The sitta is concentrated upon a gross object of meditation, an object with a manifest appearance that is perceptible to our senses, such as a flame of a lamp, the tip of the nose, or the image of a deity. 
Conceptualization still takes place, in the form of perception, the word and the knowledge of the object of meditation. When the deliberation is ended this is called nirvitaka samadhi. Savachara reflective. The sita is concentrated upon a subtle object of meditation, which is not perceptible to the senses, but arrived at through inference, such as the senses, the process of cognition, the mind, the I am-ness, the chakras, the inner breath, prana, the nadis, the intellect buddy. The stilling of reflection is called nirvachara samapati. The last two associations, sananda samadhi and sasmita, are respectively a state of meditation, and an object of savachara samadhi. Sananda samadhi, ananda. Bliss. This state emphasizes the still subtler state of bliss in meditation. Sasmita, the sita is concentrated upon the sense or feeling of I am Ness. A samprajnata samadhi, also called nirvikalpa samadhi and nirbhya samadhi, meditation without an object, which leads to knowledge of purusha or consciousness, the subtlest element. Topic: <laughs> Ananda and Asmita. According to Ian Witcher, the status of Sananda and Sasmita in Patanjali's system is a matter of dispute. According to Mail, the first two constituents, deliberation and reflection, form the basis of the various types of samapati. According to Feuerstein, joy and I am Ness must be regarded as accompanying phenomena of every cogenitive ecstasy. The explanations of the classical commentators on this point appear to be foreign to Patanjali's hierarchy of ecstatic states, and it seems unlikely that Ananda and Asmita should constitute independent levels of samadhi. Ian Witcher disagrees with Feuerstein, seeing Ananda and Asmita as later stages of Nirvakara Samapati. Witcher refers to Vikaspati Misra 900-980 CE, the founder of the Bhamati Advaita Vedanta who proposes eight types of Samapati. Savitarka Samapati and Nirvatarka Samapati, both with gross objects as objects of support. Savakara Samapati and Nirvakara Samapati, both with subtle objects as objects of support. Sananda Samapati and Nirananda Samapati, both with the sense organs as objects of support. Sasmita Samapati and Narasmita Samapati, both with the sense of I am Ness. As support, Vijnana Bhikshu ca. proposes a six-stage model, explicitly rejecting Vikaspati Misra's model. Vijnana Bhikshu regards joy ananda as a state that arises when the mind passes beyond the Vikara stage. Witcher agrees that Ananda is not a separate stage of Samadhi. According to Witcher, Patanjali's own view seems to be that Nirvakara Samadhi is the highest form of cognitive ecstasy. Topic. Samyama According to Taimni, dharana, dhyana and samadhi form a graded series dharana. In dharana, the mind learns to focus on a single object of thought. The object of focus is called a pratyaya. In dharana, the yogi learns to prevent other thoughts from intruding on focusing awareness on the pratyaya. Dhyana. Over time and with practice, the yogin learns to sustain awareness of only the pratyaya, thereby dharana transforms into dhyana. In dhyana, the yogin comes to realize the triplicity of perceiver the yogin, perceived the pratyaya and the act of perceiving. The new element added to the practice of dhyana, that distinguish it from dharana is the yogi learns to minimize the perceiver element of this triplicity. In this fashion, dhyana is the gradual minimization of the perceiver, or the fusion of the observer with the observed the pratyaya. Samadhi. When the yogin can 1, sustain focus on the pratyaya for an extended period of time, and 2, minimize his or her self-consciousness during the practice, then dhyana transforms into samadhi. In this fashion then, the yogin becomes fused with the pratyaya. Patanjali compares this to placing a transparent jewel on a colored surface, the jewel takes on the color of the surface. Similarly, in samadhi, the consciousness of the yogin fuses with the object of thought, the pratyaya. The pratyaya is like the colored surface, and the yogin's consciousness is like the transparent jewel. <laughs> Sahaja Samadhi Ramana Maharshi distinguished between Kavala Nirvakalpa Samadhi and Sahaja Nirvakalpa Samadhi. 
Sahaja Samadhi is a state in which a silent level within the subject is maintained along with simultaneously with the full use of the human faculties. Kavala Nirvikalpa Samadhi is temporary, whereas Sahaja Nirvikalpa Samadhi is a continuous state throughout daily activity. This state seems inherently more complex than Samadhi, since it involves several aspects of life, namely external activity, internal quietude, and the relation between them. It also seems to be a more advanced state, since it comes after the mastering of samadhi. Sahaja is one of the four keywords of the Nath Sampradaya along with Svekachara, Sama, and Samarasa. Sahaja meditation and worship was prevalent in tantric traditions common to Hinduism and Buddhism in Bengal as early as the 8th 9th centuries. <laughs> Sikhism In Sikhism the word is used to refer to an action that one uses to remember and fix one's mind and soul on Waheguru. The Sri Guru Granth Sahib informs, Remember in meditation the Almighty Lord, every moment and every instant, meditate on God in the celestial peace of Samadhi. p. 508. I am attached to God in celestial Samadhi. p. 865. The most worthy samadhi is to keep the consciousness stable and focused on him. p. 932 The term samadhi refers to a state of mind rather than a physical position of the body. The scriptures explain. I am absorbed in celestial samadhi, lovingly attached to the Lord forever. I live by singing the glorious praises of the Lord. p. 1232 Night and day, they ravish and enjoy the Lord within their hearts, they are intuitively absorbed in samadhi, too." p. 1259, the Sikh gurus inform their followers. Some remain absorbed in samadhi, their minds fixed lovingly on the one Lord, they reflect only on the word of the Shabbat. p. 503. See also equals equals notes <laughs>